Okay, before we get going, uh, I will just quickly uh, let you know what I'm doing on sound-wise. I have um, my Stratocaster here, and I'm strumming it this side of the fretboard, this side of the last pickup. So I've got it on my second pickup closest to me, which gives it quite a thin stratty sound, like that. Um, but it's still quite clinically clipped, which is a typical Robert Cray sound. And he tends to strum it more up the um, fretboard. So instead of maybe playing a, he tends to play a, getting a more mellow sound. So whatever guitar you're using, if you want to sort of imitate the sound, again, up to you, try and play it a little bit more up here away from the uh, sound hole if you've got an acoustic or whatever guitar you're using, try and get a slightly more mellow sound, but play it slightly up the neck, like that. You don't want a too mellow a sound on your guitar there because then it'll sound a bit too mellow up there. You've still got to hear that melody line going underneath. Um, and on the guitar effects wise, all I've got is a tiny bit of chorus and a very tiny bit of reverb. That's it, nothing more. Just colours the sound out a bit. And as usual, with Guitar Coach magazine, you've got a fully downloadable um, backing track, when I say backing track, it's a kick drum that will keep you in time. But that's great, it's really, really good discipline to listen to that and get the feeling right. Okay, now a lot of strumming patterns that we show, we try and break it down uh, into minute detail. This one's slightly different because we're actually going to teach you the pattern and the melody line at the same time because I believe that's the best way to do it. Okay, so what's what I'm doing? I'm, I'm going to give you a very, very, very basic right hand strum. You can play it fuller if you like her. Okay, so I'm trying where I can to play it there. I think I'll slip down there a little bit. And as you can see, the rhythm is just. And the first time when we come in after the count, which is one, two, three, four, the first thing we're gonna do is hit a downstroke like that. I'm just muting with my thumb the uh, bottom string there so it doesn't ring out. It's like the way he introduces it. Like that. Now he doesn't go every time, that's only at the very, very beginning. The pattern then just repeats itself. We're just using, I say, a basic E minor chord. The chord diagram is there for you, and it's all going to be tabbed out nicely as well so you can see the notes I'm playing. The notes we are playing under this is this stop. Stop. So, it's two on the open E, like that. And don't, don't bear in mind, it's only the left hand that's creating the melody line. You, melody line, you just sort of keep strumming, up, down, up, down. So we have two on the top E, then back down to the D note, third fret B string, and then back to the open E again. So we have. And if you play in your E minor chord, so you're just sort of going to an E7, E minor seven there. Then we're just going to hit the F sharp note, which is the second fret of the top E string. So we now have hitting the F sharp and then the open E again. So we go. Okay, so the melody line, if you want to hear it again, is. And the last bit is open E, F sharp, open E. Now, it will take a bit of getting used to because you, you have to somehow manage to make sure you're striking those notes so you can hear that melody line, especially when having an open chord. So I tend to sort of like, 
when we're having the open E note, trying to concentrate my strumming pattern on the top four strings, the D, G, B and E. So you can hear that note. So, like I said, after a count of four, it's a muted note there. Then we play the riff, which goes. Now, at that point, you can choose to do one of two things. Robert Cray takes his whole hand off the guitar and just stops it like that with his right hand. Well, he doesn't do it in every gig, and sometimes he might mute it and go, but that's getting a bit too over the top. So, what Robert Cray does is this. Stop, and then just strums it all over again, but without that bit. So it's. So you can take it off or you can keep it on. Now, where we're hitting out the muting our sound there with our right hand, stopping the strings ringing out, is the substitute for the first bit there. So it's. Boom. Like that. Okay, so just keep practicing that melody line up and down. Nice, simple strumming pattern. As you get more advanced, you can put a few extra little bits in. But for the purpose of this, we're just trying to get that melody line going. Then we're going to do exactly the same again, but with an A minor chord. We're going to keep the position there, and the melody line is going to be the same. <laughs> Sorry about that. So you've got your A minor position there, look at the chord, same pattern. And you're just going to do exactly the same. Oh, got to get it right first. And again, take his hand off, mute the strings. And that is all the melody line is. Now, for the thing from the song, he plays six on the E minor, and then one on the A minor, another one pattern, that is, on the a E minor, and another one pattern on the A minor. But he varies it in his live performances, I think, in the studio version, he does six on the E minor, one on the A minor, one on the E minor, one on the A minor, and then plays a little lead pattern, okay? So what I'll do quickly is just play, the best way to get the rhythm of this, I'm gonna play E minor once, A minor once, E minor once, A minor once. Just gonna do that after a count of four, just so you get the feel of it, and then I'll show you the little lead lick, okay? So remember it's one, two, three, four, mute. One, two, three, four, Oh, sorry, I thought I was going to get away minor. I'll do it this time. One, two, three, four. And that's the little lead lick I was telling you about, which uh, imitates the last line of the chorus. And what he's, what he's doing is sliding from the second fret of the G string up to the fourth fret of the G string, going like that. And then it's going to go back down to the second fret of the G string, which is the A note. Then we're going to play an open G, like this. So we have, then back up onto the A again, second fret G string. Just keep the melody line in your head. Then we're going to play the open G again. So we have. Then we're going to play the E note there, which is the second fret on the D string, once or twice, depending uh, how quick you are and what ability you have to get back into the rhythm again. Or just one. So it's. Okay, so I'll just do it one more time. We'll do the nice and slowly, the A. So we've played E minor riff six times, or four times, whatever you want. Uh, four on the backing track, I think, to keep it simple. One on the A minor, one on the E minor, one on the A minor, and then. So what I'm going to do nice and slowly is just play the E minor once, the A minor once, and then that little riff. Okay, so here we go. And 
and then it just carries on and on like that. Now it might take a bit of getting used to, but what I would suggest you do is put the backing track on and just practice simple strums. Downward strokes, just getting used to the melody line, learn the melody line playing single notes, and then as you can build it up, more you get a more, uh, more full sound, then you can go straight on with the backing track or the backing drum kick, and then play along with me at the very, very beginning. So I hope you've enjoyed that. We've got a little bit of muting going, palm muting going on there. We've got a melody line underneath the chords. We've got some funny little chord shapes that we're playing and a little bit of lead at the very, very end. So I hope that's a nice, nice diverse lesson from you. And uh, now to us all, I'll see you all pretty soon. Ciao for now.